Rosemary, a question for you. Now, we've talked a little bit about the offshore wind development going uh, on in Australia. What stage are they at and when will they be ready for vessels down there? Uh, it, I mean, nothing is physically happening yet. I kind of, um, I got so excited when <laughs> they started talking about offshore wind in Australia and started trying to, you know, network to um, hopefully be able to be part of that myself. But everybody that I talked to was like, we are so far away from needing <laughs> any engineers that know about, you know, specific technologies that was a couple of years ago. I probably ought to start, um, yeah, getting getting back involved. But it's more like progress has definitely been made, but it's more on the like um, regulatory side. You know, we're developing a framework for how you will um, be able to get environmental approvals and how you will be able to get, you know, a lease over a, an area of the ocean to install your turbines. Um, so the front running project is Star of the South and um, they have a major project status, I think, for their their project. Um, and, yeah, it's time for me to dip back in and see where they're at. But as far as I know, they haven't selected turbines yet. They're just kind of looking out to the future and saying, okay, around the time that we're going to want to install turbines, they'll probably be, you know, 16 megawatts. So let's get approvals for something about that size and, you know, work towards it. And then close to the date, they'll check in and see where is technology at. And then I, I hope that these, um, yeah, offshore developers will get in touch with me through part of Luke Consulting to help them pick the right the right turbine for them. So I say as, as those developers get closer to making these decisions, this is something they definitely need to think about is making a move like RWE did here because uh, these vessels that, that Jan or Jan Newell has, there's multiple of them from different companies floating around the North Sea. There can't be a whole lot of this stuff in the APAC region. I mean, there's some in Taiwan right now working, but there's not a whole lot like down in to Australia to pick from. So someone's going to need to make these moves quicker than quicker than they think, probably. Yeah, you're going to be out in like 2035 if you decide to try to lock something in. I think we started doing some some drilling, and it'll be it'll be before 2030 that they start installing. Um, but I don't know how how long before. But it is really interesting that all the supply chain stuff and the logistics as well. Like when I think about renewable energy technologies, I have traditionally thought of, yeah, like wind turbines, solar panels, batteries, um, all those sorts of things. But the, I mean, development is still going on there, but I'm seeing more and more that the, like the crucial, the, the bottlenecks for actually getting, you know, um, renewables and energy transition projects on the ground or in the ocean, the bottlenecks aren't those technologies themselves. They're all of the supporting stuff. It's no surprise that companies like x the one that's trying to make a, a subsea interconnector between Morocco and the UK, you know, they have seen, okay, we're going to we're going to struggle and they're yeah building their own ships. They're building their own cable manufacturing facility. And I think that we're going to see a lot, a lot more of that sort of thing. If people want to be able to bid for really big projects, then they need to be a hundred percent sure that they can deliver. And the main way that you can be a hundred percent sure you can deliver is if you own the, the means of, of that. So um, that's going to mean, yeah, vertical integration of manufacturing components and also, uh, yeah, in installation.